legs are quite literally covered in scratches and bruises everywhere. <laughs> So the other day I had this propped up like this and I was checking on a couple of our silver fox babies. I think that there's four in this tractor right now. And um, I had a hold of a couple because a couple of them are now in the house um, because they're going to be sold. And as I was taking them out, I somehow tripped and this came off of here. And I just basically, I fell face first <laughs> into the grass. And basically I just toppled over like completely diagonally and it hurt so bad. And so now I have bruises and I am sore. It just <laughs> really messed me up. So um, yeah, the things that I do for you guys, right? <laughs> so today we are gonna be talking about mainly the garden. Um, and you know i put out a post on instagram a couple days ago and it was a little bit sobby i guess um i was just feeling sorry for myself i think that day but um basically my garden is doing something weird um where it's growing really really huge plants but it's not putting any vegetables out now the tomatoes are actually doing okay um at first uh, we were getting a lot of blossom end rot on the tomatoes, but I actually think that um, it's gotten through that somehow uh, on its own and it's starting to produce tomatoes now. So that's really, really good. Um, and honestly, it does kind of give me hope that the rest of the garden is going to come out of it as well. Basically, our zucchini is getting blossom end rot. We got one medium sized zucchini at the very first part of the growing season and we grilled that up. It was delicious. That is the only one so far that we've gotten off of any of our zucchini plants. Um, and basically I keep coming out here every morning and checking on them and every single morning I pull probably two or three or four off of the zucchini plants because they have blossom end rot. The chickens are really enjoying <laughs> that my zucchinis are drastically failing, but I'm not. I'm actually very, very discouraged because I love zucchini. I love to grill it up. I like to make zoodles, which is when you spiralize zucchini and make um, spaghetti with it. Um, so, and I'm not getting that. And I think that I'm really, really frustrated because of that. And I really wanted this year to be the year where I have an overabundance of things in my kitchen and it's just not happening yet. Uh, another thing that has discouraged me, um, but uh, somebody on Instagram told me that it's not even time for these to start coming out on the vines yet, um, but it's my green beans. Um, and we have Blue Lake green beans. I think they're a bush variety. I don't know for sure. Anyway, they're, they're like, They've got these little tiny like buds on them, but so far we don't have any green beans and um, maybe I'm just being impatient on those. But I mean, the plant itself is like massive, but the vegetables that it's producing is zero. So, um, but yeah, all the plants, I think what I, from what I've read, it sounds like I have a lot of nitrogen in my soil because my plants are huge. Um, but I don't think that I have enough calcium in the soil because calcium is what allows the plant to create the vegetables and a calcium, I guess, blossom and drought can be like the sign of a calcium deficiency from what I've read and heard people on YouTube talk about. Um, so I don't know. I don't know for sure what's going on. Um, I bought a soil test at Lowe's this last weekend and I haven't used it yet. So I'm going to use that today um, and we're going to see what's going on. We're going to see what the pH level of the soil is as well because um, if it is low, I think that I can add lime to the soil. I need to read more. <laughs> but I'm going to show you guys um, what it's doing because it's, it's easier to show you. So like I was saying, our tomatoes seem to be doing pretty well. These are our Italian grape tomatoes. You can kind of see on this one where it almost got blossom end rot, but I think this one came out of it. I still might give this one to the chickens though, because it looks a little bit wonky. But most of them don't look like that. Most of them are looking pretty healthy. I actually have one red one, well, almost red, probably almost ready to be picked. And I'm just really excited to use these and basically everything. 
Um, this tomato right here is a pink brandy wine. And I think this guy has a little bit of blossom end rot on the bottom. Yeah. That is what blossom end rot looks like. But that is actually not that bad. Um, I'm probably just going to let this one grow. And then I'll just cut the bad spot off of it. Oh, I just found a good example of blossom end rot. This one right here. That is a good example of what I thought all of my tomatoes were going to do. Um, but they seem to pull out of it okay. So yeah, there is what the blossom and rot looks like on that one. And I'm probably going to toss him. Roots and Refuge, uh, she's basically the goddess of tomatoes. Um, she says, you know, if they're like this, especially if they're if they're, the bottom is covered like that, she just tosses them because why would you want the plant to spend its energy creating a tomato that is just not going to be very edible. So I'm going to toss him. One of the good things about the garden is my carrots actually, um, and they're doing pretty well, but there's not very many of them. Um, but I think they're getting pretty big. I like to, I know you're probably not supposed to do this, but I like to see how big they're getting by digging around. Several weeks ago, uh, I thinned them. I mean, this was probably over a month ago. I thinned them and I was so excited because all of the thinned carrots, I was like, oh my gosh, I have so many treats to give to the rabbits. And so I gave them all the thinned carrots. And when I went back inside, uh, somebody on Instagram said that they also thinned their carrots. And then I was clicking through their stories and they used the thin carrots to plant another row of carrots. And I don't know why I didn't think of that. And all of a sudden it like was just like, why did I give those to the rabbits? I could have had so many more carrots, <laughs> but I'm sure the rabbits really treasured that tree. They better have because <laughs> That was gonna be carrots for us. I didn't even know you could do that. I thought thinning them meant that you just throw them away, but you live and you learn, right? This is my first year of like legitimately trying to garden. <laughs> All right, here's something weird that's going on, I guess. But these, these plants right here, I think there's five of them total. These are our bell peppers and the plants seem to be very strong, um, but I've had this weird, I guess you can kind of see it on this one a little bit. It's like really weird, like how the leaves are like wrinkling up like that. And it's been like that ever since they started getting big. And I don't know what the deal is. So I was thinking maybe calcium deficiency. Um, I don't know. Uh, but they haven't started producing any peppers yet. I do have some blossoms, I guess, like that. But they were mostly drying up, probably because of how how stinking hot it was. I mean, here in Indiana, it has been 95 degrees almost every single day for the past two weeks. Right there, it looks like there's another, maybe a start. I can't tell. I've never grown pe bell peppers before, so I really don't know. And here is what I'm talking about when it comes to our green beans. And like I said, these are Blue Lake green beans, um, and they are just vining like crazy. like it's nuts they don't even know where to go anymore because i didn't apparently i didn't make this thing tall enough but there are no beans to be found except i don't know if that right there means that a bean is gonna come on right there i don't know i can't i can't tell but i'm i wonder if i'm just being like way too impatient for the green beans but it's just like the plants are crazy. Like I'm doing something right to develop all this greenery, but man, I'm not getting anything to show for it. And then we have my squash plants. I've done a lot to these guys. Um, at first I thought maybe I just needed to prune. So I pruned like crazy because they were leaves galore. But I'll see if I can find a little squash that has blossom end rot to show you guys. There's a good example. This is what it keeps doing to me. So I'll just pull it off. So this is what I keep getting. It keeps producing me little bitty tiny squash that is just, they're not doing anything. They won't go past this point and if I just leave them in the garden, they actually will just 
rot and get disgusting. So I don't know what's going on. I don't know, we've, we've had a lot of rain the last two days, like I said, so we have this one right here that looks promising. So I'm like, maybe, I mean, this plant was the one that we got our very first squash off of this year. And then all the other ones after that just started having blossom and rot. But I'm thinking this one right here is pretty big and it's really hard still. So I kind of have hope for this plant. So because of how hot it's been, um, most of my lettuce has bolted. That's what it looks like when it bolts. Um, I think I could still use some of this. A lot of people don't like the taste of lettuce after it's bolted because it gets a little bit bitter. I actually kind of like it. It's kind of weird. Like, I don't mind it too much. Like this right here, I would probably still use this for a salad. My kale is still doing good. Um, but it was really funny because I planted kale this year thinking that I would be using it. And I did use it for one dinner. And as soon as I tried it, I'm just like, you know what? I don't think I really like kale. So <laughs> there's that. But this has become the glorified rabbit salad bar. And <laughs> they very much enjoy it. So here's my cabbage. This is what my cabbage is doing right now. Apparently I got some sort of cabbage predator out here and so um, I'll probably have to buy my parents told me to buy seven dust but I'll probably put seven dust on it and see if that fixes the holy problem coming back over here I really don't even know what to say about this because <laughs> we planted um, onions and then we planted garlic and it looked like the garlic was like ready to pull up so I pulled one or two of them up and it was the tiniest, teeniest, tiniest cloves I've ever seen. So I don't know if I did something wrong there. Um, and the onions, we didn't unearth them. They've done this to themselves. So I don't know what's going on. I don't know if that is typical, but this is kind of just what's happened. So don't mind my overly messy patio guys, because like I said, it's been raining a little bit. Um, I can't really do anything about it right now. So um, I did just collect this bowl of soil right here and I took this out of the squash bed just because I'm mostly wanting to know about that one. So there's what our soil looks like. If I can show you without dumping it out. Um, and I guess I'm gonna figure out how to do this soil test kit. Um, and if you're wondering, I picked this up at Lowe's um, and it was like $11. It tests pH, nitrogen, phosphorus, and potassium. So it doesn't test calcium. Um, and I figured if there was a calcium deficiency and if that was a common thing that maybe it would test for that, but I guess it doesn't. Um, but maybe the pH is one thing that I really need to know. So, um, so yeah, I'm gonna try this out. It came with these little <laughs> test tubes right here. Okay, so after reading more about testing soil it looks like I actually need to give this dirt um, like 24 hours to sit in a water solution so um, but for the for all these tests I have to do that but for this one we're gonna test the pH because um, I want to see what that is so we're gonna go ahead and do that as I said fill it to the first line with just your soil mixture and then I need a green capsule and I need to break it open and then add water. And now we need to let the soil settle to the bottom and then see what color that is. We have this little sample sheet to look at to compare. And it looks like I think it's closer to this one right here. So maybe slight acid. Maybe. Oh my gosh. <laughs> what is this? Did you make that meringue? I did. He made like a peach meringue. Amazing looking thing. I don't know what to call it. Pretty good. Uh, haven't tried it. Mm -hmm. mm, it's 
hot out here. Mm-hmm. Tell me about it. What you talking about? Well, I was talking about my soil. Because I did a pH test. It is slightly acidic. Slightly acidic. Oh, wow. So, that means that I can add lime and make it more neutral, I think. So I guess that's getting us a little bit of somewhere. Jameson made an overabundance of peach cobbler. So, now the ladies get it. If you guys are interested in seeing the results of my soil test, I'll probably be posting it on Instagram because um, I post most things there. So <laughs> um, if you guys want to see that, go follow me there. It's just Tealstone Homestead. And in continuation of my little garden tour, these are my new additions. These are little blackberry plants. So I'm excited to have blackberries, maybe next year. Obviously they're not going to produce anything this year, they're way too small. Sorry guys, it seems like we're in full force of cicada season, <laughs> so if you hear those on my vlogs, it's not my fault. So here we are back at the rabbit hutch, and you will notice cardboard. <laughs> this is just to protect these new fans that I put in from the rain, and I know it's a really crappy... Uh, quick fix and it's not permanent. I will be making actual shutters. I just haven't gotten to it yet. So here's everybody. Everybody's doing good. We have more fans on this side. And I put <laughs> I put the plastic bags on here just to waterproof it a little bit, but um, they really do appreciate the fans a lot. Keeps them cool. Hi mama. You're such a pretty girl. Yes you are. <laughs> when it gets really, really hot, she likes to lay literally right next to the fan. Um, and I have removed the metal dividers and I put up hardware cloth just so everybody can get this breeze going on. We have another one over here with Miss Bella Bun. Yes, you have to be up in everybody's business, don't you? Yeah. Fan on this side as well. And it's just really, really nice. Um, we have Hollyhock and one of her babies here in the middle. And they get kind of both, they're, they're right in the middle of both of the fans, so they kind of get both of them. Hi, little baby. You are so, so cute. <laughs> I heard from a breeder, um, Camille's breeder actually, rabbits tend to get longer ears in the summer because Rabbits, um, they sweat out of their ears. That's the that's one of the only places that a rabbit can sweat. Um, and so when it's really, really hot out and the litter is still growing, the ears tend to grow bigger in the summer to accommodate for the hot weather. And so that is why we have this little cutie over here that has slightly loppy, really big ears. <laughs> But I just think it is one of the cutest things ever. <laughs> so anyway guys, I really hope you've enjoyed this vlog today. I guess it's kind of a garden tour. It's a small garden, so um, I'm learning still and I still have a lot to learn. So anyway, keep an eye on my Instagram story because I'm sure I'll post the soil tests there and I'll probably talk about them maybe in my next video as well. If there's anything that you guys would like to see, just leave me a comment and I will try to talk about it at some point, either on Instagram or on here. And thank you so much for watching my videos. It really, really means a lot. Um, this is really fun for me to do. So if you like this video, give it a thumbs up and please subscribe and I will see you guys in the next video. Bye guys. Bye.